Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Contagion, the 2011 thriller about the fictional NEV1 pandemic, is unsurprisingly the film that everyone is re-watching at the moment. Maybe because all new movies are delayed, along with, well, everything? Like HBO's Chernobyl or Great Disease Outbreak stories, Contagion is an anxiety-inducing biological disaster horror with terrifying scientific plausibility, science that Gwyneth Paltrow spends most of the movie donating her body to. These stories show us how the scariest threat is the way people lose their minds. So I am gonna break down just how realistic Contagion is, the real world scenarios it's based on, so that we're learning the right lessons from this, and hopefully a bit less likely to make the mistakes that characters in this fictional world do. I should also say that I am not a medical expert, and for up-to-date details on our current situation, please, please, please consult the CDC website and the WHO website. The film opens with our patient zero, index case Beth Emhoff, Gwyneth Paltrow, on day two of the outbreak. Now the movie's final sequence will show us day one, but here director Steven Soderbergh and screenwriter Scott Burns are already giving us a visual roadmap for how Contagion will be a different outbreak film than other, less realistic, and I would argue less scary examples in the genre. This movie starts out with one of Hollywood's most glamorous faces looking rough, sweating, coughing, eating, airport bar peanuts, very bad idea. And Soderbergh uses some clever camera work here, lingering on close-ups of inanimate objects, the peanuts, Beth's credit card, the touch screen. Now we'll find out later that the scientific term for these is fomites, shared surfaces where viral infections can spread from one person to another. These fomites are really the shark fin in the water of the film, the invisible threat that Soderbergh returns to again and again. Real life experts have compared the pandemic in this movie to the current COVID-19 situation, and they grade the movie high for focusing on fomites as opposed to, you know, zombie bites. But they do point out that the turnaround time would actually need to be longer, more than a few days, for the virus to shed from Beth's respiratory tract or saliva to spread to anything she's touching. The fictional disease in Contagion is called MEV1. Burns and Soderbergh conceived it while researching the 2009 H1N1 flu pandemic, the 2003 SARS outbreak, and other they consulted with researchers like Larry Brilliant, known for his work in eradicating smallpox, Ian Lipkin, WHO specialists, and author Lori Garrett, people who have dedicated their lives to studying real outbreak scenarios and conceiving hypothetical nightmare situations like the one presented in this film. Beth dies two days later. MEV1 moves super fast, and that's a big part of its danger. Infected characters don't have much time after exposure to react, educate themselves, self-quarantine, etc., before they accidentally pass it on to someone else. By comparison, COVID seems to have a longer incubation period, at least longer than a week. A lot more time to recognize symptoms and do something about it. Another big difference appears to be the mortality rate. MEV has a mortality rate between 20 and 30%, and by the end of the movie, ends up killing 26 million people worldwide. That's insanely high. Well, not as high as the 50 million people who died in the real life 1918 Spanish flu, but it's still very high. COVID's mortality rate is still being determined, but as of March 3rd, it measured it at 3.4% of reported cases. But again, that number may have changed by the time you're watching this, so do your own research. Contagion's disaster response is roughly accurate to the real world. The WHO deploys epidemiologist Dr. Orantes to Hong Kong to try to identify its source. Meanwhile, the CDC deploys EIS officer Dr. Mears to the cluster region in Minneapolis to try to contain it. And while this happens, we get more terms to understand this disease. For every person who gets sick, how many other people are they likely to infect? We call that number the r naught. R stands for the reproductive rate of the virus. So in Contagion, the r naught of MEV1 starts at two, but then later jumps to four. The r naught of COVID-19 is estimated right now to be at two to 2.5. And again, that doesn't make it deadlier. It's just a lot more infectious than the seasonal flu that comes every year. The movie also introduces CDC scientist, Dr. Hextall, who breaks down the MEV for us using colors. The virus contains both bat and pig sequences. It bat, bat and pig bat it's attached to the cell like a key slipping into a lock. Somewhere in the world, the wrong pig met up with the wrong bat. Indeed, the final scene of the film reveals those near accidental day one events. Beth's mining company deforested a jungle, displacing some bats. Bat eats banana, banana chunk drops in pig pen, pig eats banana, pig ends up in kitchen, chef touches pig's mouth, chef doesn't wash his hands, infects Gwyneth, Gwyneth, 
kills everyone. MEV1 in this way is similar to the Nipah virus in Malaysia in the late 90s, which was believed to originate from bats displaced by deforestation and was spread to humans from pigs. Screenwriter Burns researched ecotones. Humans invade remote areas and expose the food chain to microbes human immune systems aren't biologically prepared for. And our current disease actually stems from a family of beta coronaviruses that all have their origins in bats. Okay, so in the race to develop a vaccine, Hextall knows that it'll take months and months and months of human trials and FDA approval. So she takes the enormous risk and tests a vaccine strain on herself. And luckily it works. This was apparently based on physicist Barry Marshall, who inoculated himself with Helicobacter pylori to prove it was the cause of gastric ulcers. And he won a Nobel Prize in 2005. However, experts say that this action for vaccine development wouldn't be effective or safe. It would actually take a lot longer to develop a real vaccine. And by the way, a vaccine was never developed for the Nipah virus. The genius of contagion is the way it tackles the crisis with a large team of people working in various different fields. Disease outbreaks aren't problems Brad Pitt alone can solve. It takes a community of specialists working together while the rest of us listen to them and try not to freak out too much. The characters in this film are super smart. They make a lot of great heroic decisions, occasional bad decisions, and the least heroic among them is Alan Crumweedy, a social media influencer who first breaks footage of an early infected person and he uses his following to spread conspiracy theories and peddle snake oil cures like the homeopathic treatment called forsythia. Premweedy's TV appearance in the movie with CNN Sanjay Gupta playing himself in the film and now reporting on our pandemic and the fact that recent real life social media posts have referenced forsythia and the Crumweedy character. These all give the movie Contagion a really eerie art reflecting life feel. But really the misinformation spread by people like Crumweedy is the true contagion of Contagion. Indeed nothing spreads like fear. Folks, these disease outbreaks are messy. They're a bit scary. And yeah, the looting of grocery stores and pharmacies in the movie may echo what you're seeing at checkout lines. This is just how humans react when we're afraid. But Contagion is a cautionary tale to take advice from sources beyond social media, like the CDC, like the WHO, because those people are just a bunch of nerds risking their lives to keep us safe and healthy. And if they're recommending 20 second hand washes, no face touching, and social distancing, that should be good enough for us. Like I'm pretty isolated here in the blue dungeon anyway. That said, actually a heads up that new rock stars might have to make a few production adjustments during this period. Stay tuned for updates. Comment down below with your thoughts. Follow me at EA Voss, follow new rock stars and subscribe to new rock stars for breakdowns of everything. Thank you for watching. Bye.